It's hard to talk about unfinished projects. It's taken me almost a year to make this video, and still, I stand for the book undone. Doing anything with this footage sort of felt like making a promise I'm not sure I could keep. All that's left to tell this time are half-written manuscripts I'm not sure the world will ever see. And yet, this was a time of profound change. The thing I find myself the most grateful for having done. I lived with six other artists in the small rural town of Calamacchia, Italy. I was there for 31 days. Each day I began again, figuring out how to write. When I was 19, this still feels like magic to me. And so, in the midst of all that's said and done, or more correctly, not done, I have found there's still something to tell. Creating something may take time, but being an artist happens instantaneously. It's a way of being in the world. You do it with every breath, and sometimes, all it takes is one word to begin. And so in all the world stories, this one is mine, and I call it The Place Where I Begin, or Writing a Book in the Mountains of Italy. You take your pick. I wanted to give a quick disclaimer that much of this video is going to be me talking. Writing is a very internal process. Obviously, recording anything is just recording the external. That being said, I don't have much footage from this time, besides me sitting at my desk or scrambling some stray thoughts on the floor. And that's not really what writing a book is like. I mean, how do you write a book? Do you start from the first word on the first page? The process goes much deeper than that, and a lot of this is me figuring that out. The question became not how do you write, but how do I write? How do I write this story within me? Much of the footage I have is me talking about this as I lived it, where I struggled and where I felt I went right. So bear with me as I try to explain what I was still just then discovering. Today's July 4th. By the way, I'm in Calmacchia, Italy, and my retreat's called the Museum of Loss and Renewal. This place is so special. It's beautiful. It's filled with so much nature and peace. It's such a great place for me to disconnect and write. I've never really heard writers talk about what it looks like to begin. You're beginning without any knowledge of where you're going to end up. You're balancing this weird intermediary between trusting your own instincts that the way you write is necessary to follow through with that vision and not think so heavily about the way it's going to be received. Up there is kind of my rough and very vague manuscript. Obviously it's not as in depth, but it gets me from point A to point B. That's my story, that's my guideline in 10 pages, 15 pages, and then I'm breaking it down on this side by chapters. And essentially I've had this story in mind since December, that was kind of the birthing place of this idea, but the actual narrative developed in tandem with my life. I have this story within me already, and so my previous method of writing, when I was at school in St. Andrews, ever since I knew I wanted to start writing a book, I would essentially sit down whenever I had inspiration. And so that got me about 60 pages of just blurbs. I realized that they kind of were all talking about the same thing, which is my greater story. They were just different parts that I didn't realize were connected, if that makes sense. It's really ironic. I've kind of lived my own story, and that's what's given me the confidence to tell it. 
It's interesting being in this position before. The process of consumption for any piece of art, whether it be a painting, a book, a movie, the time it takes for us to appreciate these things, have that experience, is not equivalent to the time it took for the artist to create it. When you're like, yeah, that logically makes sense. It was really important for me to make that clear, just because you can read a book in 10 days, it's not me, it takes 10 days to write. The story that I have within is a truth that's abstract, but I'm still finding the best way to put it into words. And that means what I create, it might be equally as important for me to step back, to maybe say, hey, I don't really like the direction that this is going. Creating isn't just making something, but sometimes it means taking things away too. Like sculpting, I'm getting more familiar with my story, but I'm getting more familiar with it. Less in feeling, more so in words, and more so in images. And I've been enjoying very out day by day. I feel really grateful to be here. I know that as long as I don't stop, this book is gonna get written. And it's a really comforting thought that I can move at my own pace, and I know that this will come with time. Because I'm gonna figure it out. It's a learning curve, but we're learning. And that's everything. It's the 14th, 13th of July. I've been here about two weeks now. Let me tell you, writing a book is hard. <laughs> writing has always felt easy for me because I've always just written when I had inspiration, but writing a novel is really difficult. I've been looking at my writing and I'm overanalyzing it. I feel like I'm stopping myself before I really begin. I'm learning how to have respect for my process, the progress that I make, and the speed at which I make it. It can be so frustrating. I'm playing this weird game of guessing. Will the reader know what I'm trying to say? Am I on the right path? But when you think about like reading the beginning of a book, it feels a bit boring. The same way you start a new TV show, you have to get through the first few episodes before it starts getting good. The show is just finding its footing, it's getting its momentum. The same way with the book, you're reading through the exposition, you're getting to know the habits of the character. At some point in time, these things stop becoming explanatory, they start to propel the story forward, they give it movement. I'm at that point in time where my writing is trying to find its own momentum. And I'm just trying to be easy with myself along the way. I think I wanted to get this story done <laughs> fast. I've been carrying the feel of this story with me for so long, but not the actual point A to point B. That's a very different process. I'm watching it take its own form. It has its genesis and that feeling, and I keep coming back to that. I like this idea that sometimes authors will write a book just for the end sentence. And I think that's why I write. I write for the end, not for the beginning. Whenever I wrote with inspiration, I would just always have that moment because it'd be a moment of knowing. I had clarity and I'd write it down. But now I have to work from a pool of lesser inspiration, and that's hard to do. I feel like this part of my story is almost the unfeeling part. It's the part in which when you get to the end, that's why it has all this emotion behind it, because of all this kind of work you've done in the beginning. I'm not at that point when any of my work has accumulated. I feel like when I look at it, I don't see progress. I see works in progress, bits and pieces that are still trying to find their way. I had no idea what I wanted at the beginning of this residency, after being two weeks, now halfway through. What I really want is 
weeks for me to be able to find my footing as a writer, to have respect for my process and to not feel like I'm doing something wrong, but I'm learning how to do it in a way that better suits my own writing style, finding footing in that sense, less so than finding footing in like being halfway done with my novel. Even when it doesn't feel easy and even when it feels difficult for me to do, to not lose faith that I will figure out how to do it anyways. I've also never been this alone in my life. I've never been this secluded. And each day I sit down at my desk, I begin again. I feel like at the end of the day I don't always succeed, but I get up and do it anyways. And I haven't touched my phone. I've been completely off the grid because when else my life will a situation lend itself so perfectly to disconnect kind of from the outer world. And a bit of a disconnect from life because it feels like I'm almost in this trance of writing, writing, writing. I don't know. I don't know if any of this made sense. <laughs> I hope if anyone's doing something creative that they know it's a process of creation and to have respect for that process. In the same way that you're nurturing your idea into existence, you're bringing it from nothing but feeling to something tangible. Take as long as you feel it takes to bring that vision to justice. That's a power. It's your own. It takes as long as it takes and that's nothing to be ashamed about. That's something to be grounded in. It takes as long as it takes and you will do it anyways. That's what I've come to learn. And that's what I'm moving forward with. So, peace out. We need to find it. We need to follow the sound. It's beautiful. They will soon spread across the Call the monkey is. So, basically, if you have to be this, yeah, then you put it in the slightly thicker. Of course. And then of course, make those guys, they, 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 The light, I just, the, the light in the morning. Change it based on my audience. still in Kalmaki at my writer's retreat at the Museum of Awesome Renewal and I've been here for 26 days now which is quite a while, I have 6 days left I'm feeling a lot of things I'm feeling a bit, I'm feeling really alone and it's not a negative feeling per se but it's been a wonderful blessing to be so sheltered from life for so long nothing to think about but my book but also it means I'm kind of spending every day in my head and that's exciting and it's difficult and I'm learning so much about myself in this process but I'm trying to keep my work as reminiscent of play as I can because I'll never not love writing and that's what's going to bring me back to the page each day no matter how hard or difficult or daunting the task may seem for me to transmute this story which lives solely in my soul and to bring it into language which is not always a great fit. I'm surrounded by artists. Such a lovely feeling because they know me first as a writer and then secondly as Claire. Never in my life have I been seen that way before and only really in that way. And that's fascinating. 
but I think at the same time I miss being a kid. I don't have a home base right now that's why I'm traveling so much and so I'm kind of in no man's land and that's a beautiful thing because that means you can build a home you can create a home a home is wherever you are and I found a home within myself and learning how to rely on myself has been such a privilege I think being here being so secluded working it's a balance of like a very spiritual pursuit but also it's labor to write it's hard to write I mean what a beautiful thing to have something that I want to dedicate myself to but it's still working and I bring myself to the page each day and I begin again with each word and that can be daunting to look at and rewriting is such a process too rewriting is something I've learned this is necessary you say something wrong or you don't say it in the way that you feel it because that's what writing is really grounded and for me is feeling if I tell you I'm sad that's not going to encourage you to feel sad or describe to you what sadness feels like so when you read it you will partake in the experience of that emotion and feel it yourself right words are frameworks for emotions and sometimes it's hard to say all of these things have just been incredible but it's also been incredibly difficult and i don't think that takes away from the experience and i think sometimes people are shunned away from talking about difficulty as if everything in life is supposed to be easy it's not not everything requires the same effort to do and do well but that doesn't mean we're quieted from doing it all that doesn't mean we're quieted from trying i'm really sick of the sort of instantaneous mentality that our generation has adopted we can't sit with ourselves more than five minutes because we're not used to silence we're not used to feeling the passing of time because we don't know what to do with it and so when we finally sit down and be with ourselves we feel almost insurmounted and overwhelmed by the length of things and yet we realize that like it's a disservice we realize that like that's something we should get rid of and that's not the greatest privilege in the world is the fact that we have time and we can choose how to feel it i have six days left but six days feels like a small stretch of forever that feels heavy and writing feels heavy and writing feels really hard for me right now I'm doing something for the first time not immediately succeeding figuring out what succeeding looks like it's been really challenging but i've never stopped being grateful for the challenge <laughs> I am really looking forward to leaving. That doesn't mean that I'm not appreciating the time that I have here, but knowing that this is not where I'm supposed to be forever, writing and I can coexist. I'm still figuring out the right balance. Kalmakia has a pool permanent population of 39 people. And I spend a majority of each day in my room and my thoughts in the process of a world that is becoming, but is not something yet. And I'm excited to come back to Earth a little bit. I mean, what an experience. I think a residency marks the beginning of something, the beginning of a creative pursuit, not the end of it. I'm excited and grateful to be here, but I'm grateful for the next chapter that's coming too. I don't want this to seem like I know exactly what I'm doing. I have it all figured out all the time. I am clueless. <laughs> I am clueless, but I'm eager to learn. I'm excited too because I think distance helps you see progress, and I've been struggling to see my own progress now because it may seem small or not quite complete and so it feels difficult and hard for me to measure but i'm excited for perspective <laughs> so we're just seeing each other. We have her. We're sure. We're all close to her. We need to see her. We see her.
thicker. She's doing the process. Two minutes left on the clock before service. Two minutes before the dessert round. <laughs> Will the judges like the technique? Her, look at her knife skills. Don't double dip. Very important. That's a good sign. They're Italian clay. <laughs> Kalamakia remains a time of my life. With that, I mean things are different before it and after it. Did you spray yourself? No, but I figured in the morning we'd be okay. It's a place where I began, but more so the start of so many intertwining things that from here on out, I'm only continuing. It taught me how to be, to create as a way of being in the world, and that the best of things in life take time. Thank you, Tracy and Edwin, and the Museum of Loss and Renewal for offering me such a sacred space to be, to think, to write.